Welcome to the Predictable Revenue Podcast, where frontline sales leaders teach you how to build and scale an outbound sales team. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm your co-host, Colin Stewart. Today, I'm joined by a director of sales, and we're going to have a conversation that um, is not something that most SDR leaders are going to teach you. Usually, you're, you're left to sort of develop this on your own. Um, sometimes you realize you are. Sometimes you're not even thinking about it. So everybody, welcome Meg Hewitt to the show. She's the director of sales at Handshake. And today, she's going to you know, teach us a little bit about you know, general life mindset and emotional intelligence. Welcome, Meg. Hey, guys. Thanks How for you? having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. So these are two really big topics. And I think what we're going to, what we're going to focus on is like, how do we tie this into sales? How is this, if I'm an, if I'm an SDR or an SDR manager, you know, what am I going to get out of, you know, what we're going to talk to talk about today? Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things that it's good to explain what I mean by a mindset or your emotional intelligence. And I am going to say right now, I will use those terms broadly. Um, but when you think about your mindset, we're thinking about it in two ways, right? We're thinking about it in your general life. Uh, and then also how do we transition that to how you engage with prospects and, and maybe even how you, how you manage people for the managers out there. So really that emotional intelligence is how do you impact people? Um, and how do you learn how to manage your emotions that, when you're under pressure or when you really need to, to perform, which we're trying to do every single day in our lives. So we'll be touching on a lot of different things, but I think I've, I've made it a really big focus in my life and with my teams to make sure that you're really happy and really successful. Um, because if your brain is happy, you do a better job. Uh, there's some pretty interesting s statistics. Uh, I watched a Ted talk recently and if you know Sean Aker, um, he's the CEO of GoodThink. And one of the things that he said is when your brain is happy, you perform significantly better um, than it does when it's negative or, or neutral or really stressed out and when you're under pressure. So when you're not and when you're happy, your intelligence rises, your creativity comes out, and you, you have actually more energy. There were, there were two actual quick statistics that I thought were really cool. You're, you're actually 31% more productive. I thought that was amazing. Uh, and 37% better sales figures um, is some other research that I found. So I love thinking about that. And I think it get, does really set the stage for, for what we're going to talk about today. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. You might have seen me looking at my phone there for a second, only because I was looking for... I don't know if you can see that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Great That's, book. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, I've got a couple others on there about that sort of break down like the positive psychology movement, um, yeah. you know, what that is. And, but I think Sean Aker's book was, was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Right. There you go. So book recommendation right off the bat. You don't even need to listen to this episode. Just go down with Sean's book. <laughs> I know <laughs> I'm going to reference too many things, but no, no, that's we'll great. We've got, we've got somebody taking notes. Um, who's going to, not right now, but he's going to listen to this afterwards. He'll put all, all the books uh, into the show notes, cool. um, everything that we mentioned. So if you're, if you're not, if you're just sitting, walking, driving, uh, just check the show notes and, and our guy, uh, Sean, will have uh, put those in there for you. Okay. Cool. So in terms of, all right, so where, do we, where does it start, right? So we've got a bit of a definition. Yeah. You know, we've got some stats in terms of how this is going to impact me as an SDR, this is such a broad, broad yeah. You know, where, where do you want to dig in? Right. I think thinking about some tactical examples of what I do, again, this is only going to come out in sales mm -hmm. if you set your life up like this, right? If you're a miserable person and you wake up with a crappy attitude every day, there's just no way that you're going to sit down at your desk and say, oh my gosh, I'm going to have these amazing conversations with all my prospects. You actually haven't put your mind in the right place from mm. the second you woke up. So um, I'll and go through believe, a couple different things. Yeah. Totally. And if you believe that you're a grumpy person, right? right? Like going into, is it Carol Dweck's mindset? Mm, yeah. And like the, the fixed versus growth mindset, right? Mm -hmm. Like just because you're in a grumpy mood doesn't mean you're a grumpy person. And just because you're grumpy now doesn't mean you can't be a, 
you know, develop all of these skills that, that Meg's going to talk about today. I started yeah. to cut you off there. I just thought that's such a, it's such a perfect place to insert that reference because I, I used to, when I first started listening to all these like happiness books, I got onto it from another entrepreneur um, who recommended, he said he was a, a customer of happiness, something like that. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That was his official title. And I was like, what, what does that mean? Student of happiness. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I first I was like, oh, this is a little bit, a little bit out there. It's not really a hard skill. It's, it's very, very soft into the right. new age psychology. And I, I didn't really bite into it. I was like, no, I, you know, I am how I am and there's no changing that. Mm -hmm. But I think reading Carol Dweck's book really changed my mind in that, you know, there is a lot of psychology out there that shows that the brain can change, can evolve. And just because you are one way and you think one way now doesn't mean you're locked in forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Very, so I, I love that. Apologies for interjecting, but back to some, some awesome. tactical examples. Yeah. Well, I guess I can go through a little bit of my day to day, right. And how I get myself in this mindset to come into work and have a really good attitude when I'm working with my SDRs and the sales professionals that I work with. And, um, I also host a meetup once a month. And so, you know, I'm presenting in front of 50, 70 people. And if I'm a miserable moderator, people won't come to my, my meetup. So it carries through in all aspects of my professional life. And then also just maintaining relationships with people. You really have to have to think about ways that you're going to pay attention to this. So one of the, it's so little and it's kind of silly, but the first thing I do when I wake up, um, I kind of say to myself before I think of anything else and before I let my mind go somewhere that's like, Oh God, I don't want to get out of bed. I'm tired. Oh, can I just snooze again? Is all right. Today's going to be a great day. And you just stick with it. And sometimes you laugh at yourself and you're like, come on, I just kind of silly, but at least like, okay, get out of bed and enjoy it. And it really just helps me stop snoozing my alarm and say, just get up. You're going to enjoy this day. Like make the best of it. Um, so that's such a simple thing. And then I immediately make my bed, which you'll read, you know, you've, I'm sure you guys have read a lot of different things about if you have some simple routines early in the day, it helps you just feel successful in general uh, about your life. So I make my bed before I get in the shower and then I do 10 pushups. I never do more. Maybe once or twice I can remember being like, Oh, I'm going to do 20 and I was like, uh, maybe not, not a big deal. I'm also on my knees, not ashamed of it. It's just an exercise. I can still feel it in my arms. Yep. Uh, and it's just an exercise and it's just a routine that I get into that I know, okay, if I can make my bed and do 10 pushups, I'm good. All right. I can leave the house in a good mindset. Um, and you've already so, accomplished like three or four things at this point that right. you get the ball rolling. Right. And so well, then I can go into work and prepare myself a lot more easily for whatever it is that's going to come up. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so what, yeah, there's, yeah. Yeah. Talk to me about when, once you get to work. So you, you've already right. great first impression with the day you wake up, you make a great first impression. You get a couple quick wins on your belt. Now you show up at the office. Right. What's next? Yeah. So there was something interesting that one of my, an old CRO that, that I worked with, he sent an article about this phrase mise en place, which is French and I probably botched it. Um, but what that means is everything in its place. And where that comes from actually is Anthony Bourdain, who I think most people are familiar with, an amazing chef, who I, I think is pretty awesome. Um, and what it is, it actually had to do with chefs in kitchens. And so mise en place, it's kind of like a, a religion that all good line cooks put into place. And so, um, you know, I don't work in a kitchen. Uh, <laughs> I don't cook often enough. I live in New York City. Uh, but all the ingredients need to be done, all the prep has to be made, measurements and everything kind of has to be in place mm. before you start cooking, right? Because it'll take you too long. It'll all, your entire process will be a little bit out of whack if you don't prepare well enough. So, um, and that's trying to prepare yourself so you, you get everything in place before you start doing mm. at a very basic level. So super easy, think about our lives. We come to work. We're either running late or we're in a hurry or we want to get things done or we have leads sitting in the queue and we're ready to go attack them. Uh, and so we come in and we're reactive, right? We just start doing rather than taking 
10 minutes and just saying, okay, what are the two or three things that I want to accomplish today? And so I make a little, I write mise en place and I write two or three things that I need, know that I need to get done before the end of the day. It could be something so little or it could be a, a big thing. Usually it's actually some of the smaller things that I have to do that I just cannot forget to do. Um, or there's a particular, particular prospect you've been chasing down or you've been really needing to talk to this one person internally but it's never been on a list of things to do and your manager's told you to do it a million times, but you just haven't done it yet. That's a great thing to put on the list. Um, it's maybe some of the things also that aren't like the day-to-day -day repetitive things that you do. Maybe it's, I don't know, calling the health insurance company that you've just been, that call that you've been avoiding for months, uh, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Um, but what it is, is just to make sure that you have accomplish those things. And so when the day is over, um, you end up having just a sense of accomplishment. You look at a list, you've done the three things mm -hmm. and you can say, well, what have I achieved? Okay. I did these different things in my job. I had a really good phone conversation, da, 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 and I checked off these three things on my list. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so it helps you distinguish between everything feeling so urgent um, versus a couple things that are important to do. And so that helps you really focus your energy throughout the day and you can check in on that list. So anytime you have a little free minute or something like that, you end up being able to check something off your list. Um, and I, ne I mean, I'm, I'm pretty strict with myself. I never leave the office until I've completed one of those tasks. Um, maybe not never, but I really, really try. Uh, so it's just, it's just really helpful. And, and one of the other things I know is you never want to leave the office in a bad mood. Because when you leave the office in a bad mood, and then that's the place you're going back to, guess what? You're not going to enjoy going back to it as much, right? Um, so it's just really training yourself to be in that positive mindset as much as you possibly can. Um, and think of one really successful thing that you did before you leave. And then you'll be more excited to do it again the next day. Mm -hmm. One of the previous guests we had um, on the episode, uh, Taft Love, so if you're listening yeah. to this, um, it's probably four or five episodes ago, give or take. Um, he was talking about how the way they structure their SDRs day, the morning is for execution, the afternoon is for pre preparation for the following day. Nice. Right? And they know, when they're, they know when their best call times are, they know when their best email times are, and they can schedule mm -hmm. everything else. And yeah. then the afternoon is for getting ready for the next morning. So as soon as you come in in the morning, you are on the phones, you're getting the, your top priority stuff done. Then you go to your emails. Like they're very scheduled and regimented, but it's the same idea. It's yeah. uh, they're picking the top three things. They're getting prepared the day before so that as soon as you come in, you meet the day, you're instantly product, productive. That's awesome. And this, that list also, right. It could be done in your morning commute, right? Mm -hmm. um, it could be done. It doesn't have to be sitting at your desk and taking time. I love, yeah, the day before. Um, and that is, you know, you're checking the things off that you did and you're writing the list for the next day. So I love that. Totally. What are some things that, that sort of distract you? What are some things if you're, if we've got SDRs that are listening to the show right now, mm -hmm. they're like, Hey, this sounds great. What are some common mistakes that people make that pull them into reactive mode first thing in the morning? Yeah. Oh, I mean, there's so many things. I mean, everything from the fact that you're either working leads, you have a bunch of emails and you're responding to emails. But again, I want to, I want to pay attention to this part of just like life hacks on ways to be more successful a little bit. Yeah. So a couple of those, and maybe I'm old fashioned, Colin, but I think this is really does make a difference. Our minds can actually only hold a certain amount of things at one time, right? The, the art of multitasking is, it's not that great, right? We actually shouldn't be multitasking as much as we are. So the new ability to have your, text messages on your, on your computer is like, it's, it's a little counterproductive, right? You come to work to work and then you constantly have in the middle of your screen, this little notifications of what all the conversations that your friends are having. And so I have made it a very clear effort in my life to never actually put it on my computer. And I keep mm -hmm. my phone in my purse until usually about three o'clock every day. Once in a while I'll check because I want to make sure nothing's going sincerely wrong. But if I see it's just a friend, like I'm not going to respond. Um, 
it's, it's turning off notifications. It's leaving your phone away at least until lunch or three o'clock or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And, and trying to eliminate those distractions. Um, and then one of the things that I know has been really successful with SDRs is, is creating some sort of actual schedule, um, probably similar to what Taft was saying on how to mm -hmm. organize your day. And I don't know that there's a silver bullet of exactly what to do at every time. It, it has so much to do with what you're expected to do in your role, your responsibilities, um, all of that. But I do actually have an example um, that I could pull up quickly just to show you a a calendar that I've used. Here we go. Can you see it? Yep. Now it's a little it. small. Um, but if you zoom in, you can basically see, you know, you're waking up, you're commuting, and I, like, I love to put on there. And well, actually, as I preface this, so this is a specific calendar. So you can actually, in Google, it's pretty cool. You can create a calendar. Mm -hmm. And I've just created it as daily schedule. Right, so you can turn that calendar on and off at any time. So you don't have to actually see this. It doesn't show that you are busy all day. Um, it's just a guide. So you can turn it on and off when you get a little bit off track. So, you know, you're commuting, you're game planning until nine o'clock, whatever that is. Then you can clear out your inbox, get through every the initial thing, spend an hour fully focused on what you need to accomplish, and then you can take a break. Right. Now, if you haven't actually spent that whole first hour really working, that coffee break, that doesn't exist for you, right? <laughs> so, so that's yeah. like your own mental, you have to earn it, right? Take a walk, get a coffee break, right at 10 o'clock. Um, and then it really just depends, right? Either you're outbound and you're targeting target account lists and you're deciding, okay, I'm gonna target 10. Or if you're inbound, you're si saying, I'm going to skim through my list. I'm going to see, because I know my you know, ideal customer profile, I'm going to figure out and like the most accurate data that I have in the system, I'm going to see, I'm going to pick the top 10 that I want to be the first focus of the day. Um, and then you go through those or 20 or 30, whatever your capacity is. Then you get a lunch, right? Uh, and then maybe you're doing some outbound work, right? And then you're just devoting that time specifically to find more ideal customers um, that fill in the ICP or are in the territory that you're defined to or however you organize that. Uh, and then a lot of it is just kind of your general outreach, right? The communication to and from, responding to people and making sure that you're really um, actively engaging in people and following up. Uh, that's one of the biggest things that I find, SDR success. Uh, one of the SDRs that I've worked with, she was absolutely incredible. Like she would hit her quota every single month and everybody was like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, what is the secret trick? And she was outbound and she had created a little calendar exactly like this. And she, every single day, every single month, she would like print out this little fake calendar and have it on her desk. And she would put tally marks next to every single brand new prospect that she found. And she knew every single day she had to find at least five and put them in and start outreaching to them. Hmm. And so she was able to keep her book of business so fresh and her pipeline. I mean, you know, that's the biggest thing you hear account executives struggle with is the prospecting piece. You know, but if you really do devote that time every single day, five at a bare minimum, um, I think she would also, I possibly would even do 10. Um, she just saw more success, right? Mm -hmm. She stayed really organized. She made it a priority um, and it made a big difference. I think the end of the day, again, is a really good time to find additional contacts and accounts. So one of the things I like to think about on the inbound side um, is thinking of inbound leads. And actually Lauren Bailey from Factor 8 said this, I think in a podcast I watch of hers, is every inbound lead is a hint right? So it's, it's really just a hint. It's giving you some tips. It's giving you some things that you can start thinking about before engaging with this company, right? You're talking to a person, you're talking to a real person, but you're also engaging with this organization as a whole, or you should really think about thinking of it that way. Because Again, what I've had in the past is making sure those inbound people, if it's a really good company, it's right in our fit, find a couple other people at that company and outbound, I call it inbound prospecting, right? Totally. Um, so it's based off of an inbound lead, 
but you're still finding those other resources and other people that may be more of a champion or more of a mobilizer. Um, so anyway, I, gone no, off track of this subject, no, but. Totally okay. I, I think if you're an inbound rep uh, and you're listening to this, if you ever have one of those like leads aren't coming in this month, you know, and you've got that quota, you're, you're sort of, you're sort of addicted to the drip. You know, you've got to, you've mm -hmm. got to wait for the, the leads to come in. And this is one of those things that you can do to hit your quota, regardless of how many leads are coming in, right? Totally. Only got two. And take some ownership. You can step up and, and imagine how, you know, how blown away everybody will be if leads are way down and you're still crushing your quota because you're just right. doing such a better job. And this goes for leads that have just come in. If they're, if nothing has come in, go back, hit up some old leads that weren't great fits. You know, you can, it's, this is just one of those things that we see really successful inbound uh, mm -hmm. reps do. Uh, and I love that you brought it up, but I just thought yeah, it deserved to be said twice because sometimes people just need to hear it another time. Well, I may say it one more time <laughs> because this, this is real. Like we've done this. So I worked at NetSuite, which is your a very large ERP finance and accounting system got bought by Oracle. Um, and our, our rules of engagement on every inbound lead was you get an inbound lead. It's a minimum of five to, you know, five to eight touches on that specific lead. And you can't mark it as non-responsive or not interested until you get two more no's from two other people. Nice. Um, and of course it, it depends on the size of your business, but so it was every single account or lead would get 15 touches, right? At a minimum, because then you're actually getting enough of a, of an idea if it's a company initiative or if someone was just clicking around. So really anyway, like we can move on. Awesome. <laughs> oh, and, and here's just one other quick schedule. Um, this is from sales hacker. I, I took it from max, but this is a little bit, I'm, it's, it's great. Uh, it's a little bit more aimed for an account executive. Um, mm -hmm. But I thought it was still interesting and it resonated with me. It's nice, again, just to see that even an account executive, and this is good for a career progression, right? Like this is not just, hey, be an SDR and stay really organized and stay really structured. Like the best account executives do this exact same thing. So if that's what you want to be, take it. Like keep creating a schedule that makes sense for you. Mm -hmm. um, so again, just one other quick example. Love it. Yeah. yeah, I think there's a huge difference between like if you look at people that perform in an organization versus people that don't perform, mm -hmm. there's a really strong signal between um, a really strong correlation between people that actually are intentional about what they do every day and people that just sort of show up and, and just mm -hmm. flow. Yeah, totally. Awesome. All right. So if you didn't cool. see those two links, uh, I'll, I'll drop the, the links in the show notes so you can find those. Um, Meg's going to, we'll upload them and you get the images there. Cool. All right. All right. So we covered some things to, to keep you up, um, small things that you can do to stay on track. Are there any other little things that we wanted to cover? Um, I just think just saying like all those little things, like everything, it goes to your livelihood. It goes to when you have that mindset, you really just feel like you can accomplish so much more. You're mm -hmm. more excited to even work with your manager. Right. Um, you have to be able to have that good relationship and that starts with you and the way that you're approaching yourself. So that's kind of the last piece. Um, but I think it's kind of fun if we think about all the things that we can do to prepare ourselves and our lives for this, like how do we transition that? Like I said at the beginning to engaging with our prospects um, mm -hmm. and kind of the mindset and the emotional intelligence that, that can be incredibly beneficial and is really crucial um, to engaging with, with prospects or your boss. So more of that, totally. that work situation. Yeah. So let's, let's talk about uh, your mindset and uh, mm -hmm. emotional intelligence. If you hear us call, um, okay, if we call it EQ, sure. I, I don't know what it yeah. stands for. Or it's emotional quotient, right? But we'll use that synonymously for emotional intelligence mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So, so how does this, yeah. Talk to me about how this ties into prospecting. Yeah. So actually right before we get to prospecting, um, I, I have to, of course, reference one of my favorite people um, is Kim oh, Scott. You. And I know oh, so God. many people love <laughs> calling YouTube. <laughs> uh, but Kim Scott, and I'm sure many people have watched her YouTube video. She also has a TED Talk. Uh, she also has a book. And it's Radical Candor. Uh, and a lot of people use it. So the managers out there, if you have not read her book, it has transformed the way I've managed people. Uh, it's... It, 
I'm not going to be able to reference all of it, but what radical candor actually means is, is figuring out that balance. If you think of it on like an axis, right? Um, and you think about challenging directly is a piece of it and really caring personally. So you want to be in that, that quadrant, right? And it's doing those things at the same time, which is really hard. Um, it's really hard to be really direct and warm. And that's the combination that we're all trying to find the balance of because when you're direct and warm, the other person has no other way to respond than to be direct and warm. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a really good management tactic, but it's really also beneficial for, for salespeople. It's, it's beneficial for, for salespeople in the conversations you have with your managers, right? You come in the room like, oh, I want this, right? You're like, the manager is just going to be like, ah, okay, for right? The, They're the, probably the, not the going to respond as well. Right. <laughs> For those that can't see the video, Meg made oh. a very scary face. I, I actually stepped back a little bit. I was, don't, I was yeah. like, well. <laughs> right. Don't pause. Don't pause uh, the video recording on that. No. Just kidding. Um, but yeah. And so it's how do you approach situations in that way? Um, because mm -hmm. you will get much better responses from your managers. Um, and let's, let's think about how you think about that on sales calls. So being direct um, reviewing what you understand, helping them understand what they've explained to you, uh, and then being direct about how we may be able to help, right? Like, don't be shy to explain what they've explained to you in really clear terms that helps you build, build the case for why the, the, whatever you're providing could be a really good fit. And it doesn't have to be this beautifully presented way. Like, be a real human, right? We're talking to people here. Uh, and that's so, I know everybody says it and it's really hard to do. Um, but again, I hate to keep referencing people, but I feel like it's not fair to say things that I've learned from other people without saying who I learned them from. Um, so Jeffrey Gittimer is, is a great, great sales guy. He's been around for a while. I recently saw him, saw him at the sales machine and, but I, I watched a video that he had and I, this stuck with me and my entire team watched it actually as well. And so what he says is every single minute you're in front of a prospect, they're deciding how much they like you, right? And how much they believe in you, how much they respect you, how much confidence they have in you, right? Mm -hmm. And then how much they trust you. So all of those things are actually what's most important. And so often what we're thinking about is I'm trying to qualify them, right? We're trying to qualify them, but they're actually trying to qualify us when we're going into it. So they're never going to qualify us if they don't like us, if they don't respect us, if they don't trust us, if they don't believe that we're just a real human, just trying to help them out. Mm -hmm. um, so, I think because of this, you really have to bring such a sense of attention and mindfulness to all the calls that you have, because you have to be the SDR that everyone loves talking to. Because if you're not, it's probably going to be really hard for you to hit your quota. Yeah. <laughs> you, you pick up the phone and your grumpy cat on the other line. Like, right. You know, if you're not enjoying your day, um, the, the prospects can tell. Yeah. I don't remember if it was a Gittimer. I think it actually was from Gittimer's little red book of selling yep. or sales. Um, he talks about how important it is to come in with like that positive attitude. And even mm -hmm. if you're having a crappy day, he had a couple tricks where he, one was just looking, look into a mirror and just, and just be like, yeah. don't smile and just say that, <laughs> like, don't smile. And like, I can't look at a mirror and be like, don't smile and be like, mm -hmm. right. the, other, the other trick was like, just put a pencil in your mouth and bite it. And it forces your, your face to activate the same muscles as smiling. If you hold that for 30 seconds, it actually like makes your brain think that you're smiling and it starts to release like the same chemicals. Huh. Wow. You're, you're also eating pencil. So like, I don't yeah. advise just putting any pencil in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pencils get passed around. But I like, I like the thought. It's the same as in singing. And this has to do, well, to do with that. Like, so singing, you often hear uh, is to smile when you sing because mm -hmm. your pitch will stay more accurate, right? And it's because your, your voice is just more pronounced and it's 
I mean, I'm not a, a, an amazing singer, but that was something back in middle school, right? It's like smile when you sing because your pitch will be on, on track. It's the same thing. I mean, we're doing phone sales now. You're listening to a podcast. Hopefully, I sound fairly interesting um, because if I didn't, you, you wouldn't be listening anymore. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's such a little thing, but think about the way you sound because a prospect doesn't get to see you. They don't know you. They don't want to know you personally. Mm -hmm. You need to get to know them and be excited to talk to them. And you can't use your facial expressions. You can't show anything about yourself other than your voice. So that's how you're going to get them to like you and believe in you and respect you and have confidence you and trust you. I mean, it has very little to do, not very little, but less to do with what you say. It's, it's all how you say it, which is again, obvious, but you got really good reminders. Cool. Yeah. So we understand the importance of emotional intelligence and EQ and having the right mindset. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's put ourselves in the situation of an SDR yep. where we've got all our pregame, we've got our calendar all scheduled out, right? picking up the phone time. So what are some things that we can do on those calls to, to come across as a higher EQ or have like with a good mindset? How do we be that on the yeah. call? How do we be that SDR that everybody just loves talking to? Yeah. So one of the most, it's, it's simple, but again, we become so reactive in our jobs that this is a very thing, easy thing to skip over, is having a really clear vision going into every single call. I mean, you're probably doing qualification calls, hopefully a couple times a day at least, um, or a couple times a week or whatever it looks like. And so think about what are you hoping to get out of the call? Whether it be you're just doing a call down and you're trying to get five minutes of someone's time, mm -hmm. right? Um, or you're really trying to get, do we think it's a fit? Do they think it's a fit? Is this something that they're really thinking about making some sort of change, right? That's yeah. maybe more on the mid-market and enterprise side where you really have to vet the prospects really well from the get-go. Um, it's, it's all the different things like what are, what are the use cases that we actually solve for? Mm -hmm. Do they live within one of those, right? Whatever it is that you're trying to exactly figure out, but what are you hoping to get out of the call and how will you get there? And then set a clear agenda, set it up for yourself. I did this exercise actually with an SDR today. We did a really fun, and this is a good trick for managers and, and for SDRs. I highly recommend you do this with managers because they would love it. Um, we went through a call of his that was a no-show. And he went into the conversation and luckily we have a great relationship. I really do try to, you know, practice what I preach on having radical candor. So we have a very honest, nice relationship with each other. And I said, okay, you're going to need to bring a call that maybe you think was okay. And something happened to it. And I was like, ah, oh, this was a no show. They didn't even show up. I was like, oh, this is perfect. Okay, great. Let's listen to it. And before we listened to it, we whiteboarded. I was like, okay, ideally best call possible. What are all the different things that you do in order, right? Mm -hmm. There's now so a good time. Thanks so much for taking the time to talk. I want to set a pretty clear agenda of what I'm hoping to accomplish today. Let's confirm that. Like we went through every single nitty gritty step. Then we listened to the call. I mean, he was cringing the entire time. And luckily we got, you know, we would pause it and say, okay, what do we miss here? Yep. Obviously. And it got, you know, it was fun actually because he could laugh at himself because mm -hmm. he knew that he kind of didn't follow any sort of structure. Uh, and he kind of disqualified the pro it was letting the, dis the prospect kind of try to disqualify himself throughout himself throughout the call, which is kind of funny. Um, but it's like, how do you ask those really thought provoking questions? But it's a really good exercise to do anyway, before I go on. Mm -hmm. um, so go through a couple of the disqualified calls and give that honest feedback. Um, but again, being direct and warm, it's not here all the things you did wrong. Because mm -hmm. uh, no SDR wants to hear that. They can self-diagnose most of the time if you train them. <laughs> um, so figuring out how to do that is really, really important. Um, but like get to know the prospect, right? Get to know their business. Get to know what makes them tick. Because without that, again, they don't want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to ask thought provoking questions. Like the prospect has to think when they're on the phone, because if they're just answering your questions, 
This is not an experience they're going to remember. Mm -hmm. And you're going to sound like every single other company that they've talked to that sells exactly what you sell. Right. If these are, you're asking me questions that you could have done your homework on. Right. You know, you could yep. have found that on LinkedIn. You could have found that on discover or you could have mm -hmm. found that wherever. Right. Yep. You know, like um, I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, not, not engaged. Yeah. I want, to, I want to talk about me. I want to talk about my problems and like what's, what's wrong in my life that you can help me with, you know? Right. And, and I think it's good. It doesn't have to be perfect every time, right? It's not going to be perfect every time, but if things start to get off track and you've gotten distracted by something or you've been taking notes too, too much and you're not really listening, mm -hmm. kind of go back to, okay, what's the business problem we're trying to solve here? Mm -hmm. What are we trying to help them with? Do I even understand what they're doing in their business enough that relates to what, we're, what we do, where I can help them as kind of this consultant understand, or just at least paint a better picture for themselves of what it could look like, hypothetically, mm -hmm. if they fix this thing, whether or not it's with the thing that you do. But if you just paint that picture and be a consultant, they're going to come back to you because you've given them a unique experience. Um, and if you don't understand, this is like, again, it's okay. It's, you know, you're either fresh in your career, you're brand new, you've been doing this for a couple years, you've been doing this forever. It, it doesn't matter. Don't be afraid to ask for them to clarify, really understand what they're saying. Um, do you have then, specific ways that you, yeah. you ask for clarification? Because I, I think one of the things I, I struggled yeah. with when I was younger is like, oh, why? Why is that? And like, that's right. like, like challenging. <laughs> yeah. Like, challenging me, the yeah. Let me think about my laundry list. Um, well, and, and this is like such a, <laughs> such a simple thing, but it's so often for an SDR. So let me, I'll get to that. But you have to have some sort of, hmm, okay. Wow, that's interesting. Totally. Or, but not, okay, so, okay, great. Okay, yeah, that was really helpful. Yeah. It's, hmm, oh, nice. That makes a lot of sense. Sure uh, that you're actually thinking Actually, about it. wait, what you said there was really interesting, and I, I'm not actually sure I understood it fully. Could, could you clarify that a little bit for me? Or, you know what, I could, I could really use an example of that. Um, just trying to really better understand what you're talking about here mm -hmm. or help, help me understand how that fits in to exactly what we're talking about today. Love that one. Uh, That's my go-to. Yeah. That helped me understand. Totally. Uh, totally. There is a variety, right? Or yeah. Give me an example. Help me understand. Clarify. Yeah. Those are just so much better than, or, Hey, I actually haven't really heard of that before, but sorry, you know, I, I mean, it, you can be human. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I actually, I've never heard that before. Like yeah. it's not going to necessarily set you up for a huge amount of success. They want to know that, you know, you, they want you to be the expert, but if it's something very little and minute, it's okay to be a real human. <laughs> and if they don't expect you to know everything. And if you're genuinely not an expert, then they're going to know that, especially if right. they are. And, and that actually, you get to tell them at the beginning of your call, right? I mean, some people do this. It's not necessary by any means. But when you're setting that agenda, explain who you are. I'm a sales development representative. It's my job to get a better understanding of who you are, what you do, what your business does, and what brought you to Handshake in the first place. And then I'd love to tell you a little bit more about, about Handshake and what we do here and how we've helped businesses like yours. They know you're a sales development representative at the beginning if you set the stage. So they know you're going to ask them questions and they know that you may not know every single thing that they say. <laughs> um, so, yeah. That's that. Great. So we're, we're asking them to, to clarify what's, what comes yeah. next. Yeah, right. So then you really want to, I mean, clarify, quantify, right? So how big of a need is it? And is it is it worth fixing? Because I think one of the things, and, and specifically here at Handshake, we, we do pretty, pretty strict qualification, right? Mm -hmm. We're not just, we're not 
letting the SDRs just get a meeting, right? And it's not even that just the sales team has accepted the meeting, right? If, if, it's, if the person doesn't actually think that it's worth fixing enough, right, which is really magnifying that need that they've explained to you and making sure that you really understand the challenges and they're willing to actually throw X amount of money at this problem, we're not, we're not going to be pursuing that as fast and as actively as we would, right? We will let the SDR nurture that and help them better understand what we do here and how we help other people like them, the value that we deliver. Um, so that, that, you know, kind of quantifying how big of a problem is it, is it even worth fixing and then magnifying it, right? This is that step that people forget so often because it feels really repetitive because mm -hmm. they've just given you all of this information and they've maybe even expressed a challenge or a pain. And then you have to say, I mean, I'm, I'm working down the Sandler funnel, right? It's, it's, what's the impact? How, what impact is that having on your business? Mm -hmm. And it's not saying exactly like that. It sounds very, you know, prescribed. Um, yeah. But like, what, Colin, what would that do for you? If you could have that scenario that you just described, what would that mean for you? Does that mean you could spend more time with your wife? Does that mean that you could do X, Y, Z? Does that mean that your team internally, like you don't have to manage people that are miserable? Whatever it is, like there's something. I'm like, how much of a priority is it? Like, is that really important to you to make your people happy? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of those payoff questions, right? Um, totally. So what's the payoff? Yeah. And then this is again, gotta ask why. At least three times on every call over 10 minutes, <laughs> why? right? Um, what, how come, why do I need to do that? Why? Well, um, because they'll expand. You'll get more information from the prospect. People can't, you can't, I mean, it's not, a, it's not a closed ended question. It's a very open ended question, but when we know why we're able to respond so much better mm -hmm. and it helps us, help them figure out why they should be really considering our solution. Gotcha. Sets yeah. the stage for the close, really. Totally. When you, when you know their why. And your recaps are better. Like your follow-ups are better, right? If you understand the root cause mm -hmm. and then you remind them of that root cause throughout the entire sales process, you will close more business. Right. That's, that's really why you're on the call in the first place is to right. discover that why. And it, cause it really sets the stage for this is the reason that this individual is going to do something in the first place. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that motivation, it's hard to build a case for, Hey, let's have another meeting. Hey, right. let's let me book you with an AE. Hey, let's book you for a demo. And that's, and I said recap in terms of the follow up, right? But Recap throughout the conversation. So although you, you, know, you have this structure of a call, the things that you should do throughout the call, I call it repeat and recap, like, re repeat slash recap, right? Not repeat verbatim, but say what they said to you um, so that they understand, they trust you, they know you were listening, all of that. Um, and then I, I don't know where I got this from, but I call it checking the pulse, right? This is something else you do throughout the call. Did I miss anything? Does that make sense? Am I correct there? Is there anything I missed? Um, anything along those lines. Does that make sense? I mean, that's a little, that's that one. Some people like, some people don't. Um, all of these, again, it's like preference in terms of how you say it, but that's like checking the pulse throughout. Saying someone's name throughout the call. Mm -hmm. Colin, it's been awesome talking to you today, right? You're like, oh, shoot. We're almost to the end of this call and she still remembers my name. Wow. That feels good, right? Uh, and then you just want to create clear next steps. Uh, and account executives have to do this. You have to do this. Like, help them understand. This is not just like, oh, I have the call. Great. I'll pass it off to the AE. Mm -hmm. Help them understand what is going to happen once this call is over. Colin, it was great to talk to you today. What we're going to do from here, I will send you a follow-up email. I'm going to introduce you to a colleague of mine. She's a specialist in your industry. And what they're going to do, review the information that I gave you prior to hopping on the call with you. 
then I'm sure she's going to have some additional questions to make sure she really understands the scope of what we're talking about here. Um, do a little bit more digging just to make sure that technically, you know, requirements of what you're really looking for, we can help you there. And then if it makes sense and it seems like a fit, she'll go ahead and show you a demonstration of our platform. How does that sound? It sounds okay, great. great. Awesome. So look for that email in the next 10, 15 minutes from me. Uh, and we really look forward to engaging in more conversations with you, right? Like it's just this like, and, and that's warm. It's like, mm. oh my God, you're going to hold my hand through this process. Like I don't have to do this alone. So. That's amazing. I, I hope every SDR that's, that's not doing that is, is writing that down <laughs> nearly verbatim so you can <laughs> work on that as a script. Hey, it's something like that. It's not, totally. not, not perfect and everybody gets to make it their own, but. For sure. But I think if you start with just that, you've got a really strong base to build on. Yeah. Right. Which is, I think, more than most of us had when, when we started. Because <laughs> there was no podcast back when I was. <laughs> when I was <laughs> me neither. So we're coming up to the, the sort of target time here. Maybe yeah. went a little bit over, but let me just, I, I think there's such a valuable uh, content. Just the last few minutes here. Maybe just let me recap. So Amazing. some of your tips for being that SDR that everybody loves. It's have a clear vision going into the call, set a clear agenda, get to know the prospect and their business, you know, ask those thought provoking questions and really learn what is the personal and professional pain here? What's that going to mean to, if you solve it, um, don't be afraid to ask them to clarify. And so make sure you fully understand, but also once they clarify, then you need to quantify, is this really worth fixing? What's that? What is that going to mean to you if you do that? You need to ask three questions. Ask you, sorry, you need to ask why at least three times on the call. You got to recap kind of like I'm doing right now and you got to set clear next steps so that they understand and, and you really sell because you can sell that next step because your job is not, is not just to book a meeting. It's, it's that first step in the sales process and you're there to get the prospect excited and jazzed about actually getting on the phone with one of your account execs. How'd I do Meg? Oh, that's great. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I think this is a, a great place to leave it here. Uh, I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I feel like I learned a ton and I hope that our list, I know our listeners did as well. Awesome. Thanks so much, Colin. This is great. It's a lot of fun. Definitely. Thank you, Meg. Thanks.